there are many hidden patterns in roulette data. We can use these patterns to help predict what is more likely to happen in a game of roulette in the next few spins, where to bet and gain an advantage over the house. One area of hidden data lies in a mathematical concept called probability distribution. We are going to use the dozens for today's example, ignoring any zeros and combining the results from two consecutive spins to help us make better predictions. What we need to do will be easier to explain if we look at rolling dice first. Of course, a single dice gives us six possible outcomes from one to six, and they all have an equal chance of winning. But there are many games that use two dice and combine the values to get a final result. With two dice in play, there are now 11 possible combined values from two to 12, but they are no longer equal. You are more likely to roll a three than a two, and there is even more chance that instead of a three, you will get a seven. Why is this? By using a second dice, we go from six possible outcomes to 36. There is only one way you can roll a two. There are two ways to roll a three, and six ways to roll a seven. By combining the results from two dice, or technically, if you prefer, from two random events, you are creating variants in the results which form a predictable distribution pattern, which looks similar to the way we have shown the dice here. Let's get a truth table for the possible dice outcomes and see if we can modify it for the dozens in our roulette game. There are only three possible results if we are considering the standard dozen bets on a roulette table. So can we just shrink down the truth table a bit as if we had a three-sided dice? The answer is yes. This pattern remains the same for any size pair of equal results. The dominant outcome will always be the number of results possible from a single spin, roll or whatever, plus one. So, let's put away the dice and focus on roulette. Remember, we are ignoring zero in this example, so the calculations shown are not 100% accurate, but that isn't important to the method we are trying to explain. So how does all this help us predicting where to bet? Let's bring in some real spins to show how this works. We will work back from the bottom corner, which is how the spins came in. The first result is 31, so that receives a value of 3. The 20 receives a value of 2, which means our first result from two spins combined is a 5. 32 receives a 3, so the next combined result is another 5. Let's remind ourselves of the probability distribution and start a chart. The 19 gets a 2, so we get another 5. We are already seeing an outlier in the data. But this is exactly the type of data we want. Although this is only four spins worth of results, we can already see that five is ahead of its expectation and four is the most behind. To get a combined result of four here, we would need to get a two here. So we can reason the second dozen would be the best bet. As we already know, the results you see next spin is a 15, which gives us the two we need for a result of four. So a bet on the second dozen would have been favorable. Let's do one more. Look at the data. Which result is furthest behind? We already have a two from the 15 as a starting point, so we know we cannot get two as a result and we cannot get a six, so that just leaves three, four and five. We know five is ahead, four has almost caught up, so three is the most behind at this point, so you could bet on the first dozen to get a result of three. We can see from the 11 on the next spin, this would also lead to a win. If you don't win straight away from a prediction, then use your normal progression method to follow the prediction you have made until you get a win. Let's say we were going to aim for a four next. We would place our bet on the third dozen, but lose. We would try again moving one step on the progression, but lose again. The first dozen has won three times in a row, so our bet stays on the third dozen and we try again. We lose again, but to get a four as a result, we need to get a two here. So we switch from placing our bet on the third dozen to the second dozen. It works and we get our win. The system works when you are aiming for a three, four or five by following a progression, but occasionally changing where you place your bet in response to the previous result. We are no longer stuck playing a cold dozen. There is another way to play if you are aiming for a two or a six. For example, at this point, we can see the six is behind. So let's aim for that. We know there is only one way to get a six, which is for the third dozen to repeat. So we can wait patiently for now, saving our money until we see the third dozen win and trigger our bet. Let's fast forward to the next third dozen win, which we already know is the 28 from our first row of results. If you had been following the data along for each result, you might change your mind from aiming for a six in favor of aiming for another four. But as the graph is heavier one side, a balance is more likely to occur. So aiming for the six remains our best option. Let's see how we would have done by bringing the results table back. Remember, if you are aiming for a two or a six, you no longer need to bet on every spin. You only need to place a repeat bet 
or positive bet when you observe your trigger. We know the 28 or third dozen has come in, giving us an opportunity to make a six by betting on the third dozen for the next spin and hopefully getting a repeat win. You can see we would lose our first bet. We wait until we see another member of the third dozen to appear, then place our next progressions bet on the third dozen again. It's another loss, so we wait until we see the 35 to bet on the next spin. We win, and it's comfortably within the first few levels of our progression. Now this might seem a bit complicated at first, but let's discuss how easy it is to keep track just using a pen and paper with a live game scenario. Simply set up your page so you can write down which dozen won, track the results, and make a rough distribution chart. Ideally, you want to start by putting in some of the previous results before you play. The bigger the outliers are in your data, the better chance you have of winning. As we said, we ignore zero, so just wait for the next result. The next result is the second dozen again, which combined gives another four. So you can see the graph is heavy on the right. Aiming for a three by betting on the first dozen would appear sensible at this point. As the data from our probability distribution suggested, the first dozen wins. Hopefully this has given you some insight to how hidden data patterns occur behind the scenes from random results and how they can help you predict wins. Remember though, no system is guaranteed. Waiting for strong outliers in the data before you start betting should help you avoid going too deep into a progression. You can use the method on any bet size by altering the truth table respectively. However, we ourselves avoid even money bets, favoring smaller bets with less risk and higher returns. The smaller bets are easier to track with a spreadsheet. We might post up a video on how to create a simple spreadsheet to do this if enough people hit subscribe and like the video. Of course, flattering comments will also work. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.